All right, well, welcome to another video. This one uh, is a bit of a sponsored video. Had uh, Elecro, they've been sending me emails for a little while and um, I finally agreed to uh, try out one of their products. Um, I didn't think this was actually going to arrive. It did today and I would confess I've had the box open and played with it already. Uh, mostly with my donations and deliveries video. And uh, I have to say, I'm reasonably impressed in what they sent. So they sent me um, an ESP32 5.79 inch uh, e-ink display or e-paper display. Um, and it's 272 by 792 resolution. Um, and it's not too bad. So driven by an SPI interface. They sent me this little, um, uh, oh, the Christmas sales and everything. Well, this got here well after Christmas and New Year's. But um, they did um, talk to me about maybe doing one of these things at some point. Uh, I didn't actually end up replying to that email, which I, I perhaps I should have. Um, some interesting stuff here. We'll go over all that later anyway. I'll leave a link in the description to these guys. Um, so this one. Now, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. What I was expecting was just like a, an e-ink display or e-paper display. Um, and that's it. But this is actually seems to be fairly much a complete unit. So there is an SD card slot. There is something in there. I'm not sure what that is yet. Um, I think that might be where the ESP32 module is. There's USB-C interface, which I've discovered is for power. And being e-ink, after you've taken the power away, it keeps its image. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Little two pin connection. I'm not sure what that's for yet. I have peeled the um, protective scratch guard off the back. And it's a weighty little unit. This is like printed acrylic in here. It's very solid. A couple of captive nuts in here for mounting. I'll check the threads on them in a minute. The, this is labeled boot and this is labeled reset on here. That I think is a little light. There's a light somewhere in the back there. Um, all the IO pins, it's pretty hard to see here, but all the IO pins are labeled or engraved in there. Um, what do we have on the other side? We have a little nice little sprinkle tong. This is like a, a little directional button. Um, very nice, actually. Feels very good. Nice and springy. And there's two additional buttons here. Um, that one is labeled exit and one is labeled menu. Okay, there are Phillips head screws to hold things together, which I appreciate. We might pull the back off and have a look, actually, and see what's in there. Um, I haven't peeled the scratch card off the glass yet, but this feels like actual glass on there. Um, which I think is nice, rather than just plastic. Bit of silicon here around the ends. Um, and these are just standard pitch um, connectors like you'd find on an Arduino and stuff. I might have some little pin headers I can uh, plug in to test that. Now, I didn't actually think this was going to arrive. I ended up making this out of a standard um, display at one point. This is uh, the little twin humidity and temperature sensor for my six-wheel drive ambulance with a real-time clock. Um, this, however, looking at how advanced this is, may actually do a lot more for me. I've been thinking about maybe making something that can alert me to when auroras are uh, about to happen, or maybe some other information. This might get used, you know what, I could almost put it up here to do subscriber stuff. I have a little OLED in here that shows um, channel members there. So uh, I'm going to have a think, see what we can do. But I might, I'm going to be curious and pull these uh, screws out. But after I just um, boot this up and show you what it does. Now it does a little flashing because the way e-inks work, you do need to actually change the colors a couple of times to reset them. Uh, because it basically um, moves inks or ink molecules from the top to the bottom of the stack. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. There are better videos out there. But this little toggle here allows you to move this arrow around. All right, I just had this apart to try and map the uh, the buttons here, and I realized that this little rocker on the side here um, is actually a button under it as well. I'm gonna have to restart this. Now, I've discovered too that plugging this in um, to a USB-C um, to C cable uh, does actually come up as a USB to serial uh, driver. So this is coming up as COM20 in mine. It'll probably come in like COM1 or 2 or something in the average machine. Um, but there's a couple of different things here. There's a description for it. Um, if I push in on that thing, which I didn't realize was a button, um, we can go through a couple of different images here. And it does the black and white flash to try and just refresh the screen so that all the, it doesn't get up with ghosting, which is 
thing that is specific to all e-ink displays, not necessarily this one. So the flashing does help to get a crisper image. So you can scroll through the different images on here and all the rest. So we're going to go back with the back arrow here and we can scroll through to say scenario. They give a bit of a, a simulation as to how you might use it here. Um, so say you could turn lights on and off so you could scroll up and down and select things on and off with the interface buttons. Very nice having these built into the side here. So I have a 3mm metric fine or yeah, so I think it's 3mm metric fine screw here. That does not appear to fit. Would be nice because I have lots of those. It could be a 2mm. Alright, I found a 2mm screw. This is out of a laptop. This is an M2 screw. Yep, M2 fits. There is a little bit of Loctite in this screw. So 2mm metric is what those captive threads are. Alright, let's rip these screws out. Not in too tight, which is nice because it's plastic. They come out very easily. These appear to be the same 2mm threaded screws that would fit that hole. Some things out of China you do get, they're just not quite finished well enough. This looks like it's... Oh, wow. <laughs> so they made a custom backplane for this. So um, I won't peel that whole thing off. I am kind of impressed. They could have just made a big open space. But no, they've done little inserts for all these different holes here. And for the different chips. Quite a bit of time and effort put into this. Okay, so it seems like we have an ESP32 WR00M-1 in here, if I can read that correctly. So that um, looks like it could be good. So And looks like this one has either the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi module. I think this might be a Wi-Fi interface with it. So that would be very handy. If that has its own ESP32, that saves me loads of work. Um, and we'd be able to put uh, a plenty of room for programming code on that too. All right, now I need to go find the website and find the documentation, learn and um, do something useful with this and report back. All right, so my first little uh, project, I tried to write my own using um, ChatGPT as a, a helper and I took the back off so I could read where all the IR pins are and what they're all for. Um, didn't quite help. I did this and restart, not really helping. So I have eventually found, after a little bit of digging, I found the GitHub for all of these things. I was about to say on screen that they're a little scant for support, but now that I've found the GitHub um, that wasn't on their website, but I'll put that in a link below, uh, there's pretty much everything I need to know, including a um, whole uh, extra little demo uh, script here, which uh, we can see all of this here. All right, so checking through, they have included the data sheet. I did find this earlier myself, but um, yes, yeah, so this actually has Bluetooth as well and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This would be kind of nice. We've got a 16 meg, I think, PS RAM. Kind of better than an Arduino Uno, which is what I was going to plug into it. So uh, we're going to work with the onboard ESP32. This looks actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Now, probably the only thing that I'm going to have a problem with here is I don't read simplified Chinese. Um, some of this stuff I can extrapolate. I know a couple of little characters and I'm learning slowly, but uh, this will definitely need to be translated to English to help with some stuff. This does give me some information in English that I can use, but not enough. I may have to translate this or see if there's an English version in here. Well, conveniently, they do include DXF files for it too. So uh, I'm going to open this up in AutoCAD and see what it looks like. Now opening the CAD documents I find out they are one to one metric units which is nice. They're millimeters in ANSI format. Now just because some of you will try and tell me to that uh, GitHub I downloaded I tried to add as a library entirely as instructed doesn't work. Alright so I'm doing what should be obvious and I'm moving the contents of that zip file into the uh, Arduino libraries folder here. If I can find a spare gap in the bottom of my folder list here. Anyway, so I'm just going to do the old fashioned way and I'm going to just dump them straight into, if I don't miss key things here, straight into my documents Arduino libraries folder. Also, um, Thanks to Servo City for the reminder that I should have known like seven years ago. 
Now in the ASP32 boards list, um, I did find an Elecro panel 7, which is probably not correct, but uh, the other ones aren't working, so we're going to try that. Now we're plugged in, COM20 does come up. Don't know if this will work specifically, but uh, now that we've got that, we're just going to do compile and upload and see what happens. Okay, so I set the correct COM port, and I set the Elecro 7P, and it uploaded and compiled. And we have something on the screen. Okay, this is awesome. Now, the script I used here was the global refresh text script. Alright, so a full 24 hours later, I am still horrible at coding for the ESP32. But I have had some progress. So, I've worked out how to position text differently. I've worked out that there are only two fonts programmed into this. Um, and how to select them. And I've worked out that I can have it respond to a button pressing on any one of these buttons and actually give us feedback on that. So this one should also add an additional line down there. I can do the up button and it should respond to that. All right, after nearly a week of a whole bunch of stuff happening in the meantime, I finally got this thing to do something. Let's uh, push the reset button on the back here and let it reset and we'll show you what it did. This flashing is what e-ink displays need to do in order to refresh the, the screen. You've got to go black into white again. Pulls all the ink particles to the back. So, this actually connects to Wi-Fi. I managed to do that and get confirmation. And I got it to listen to the buttons. Now, the OK button in this is pushing down on the wheel. And it should acknowledge that. And now it should check for RSS info. And it's going to pull up the Aurora... Um, uh, service. So this is from NOAA because they offer uh, an RSS feed. The Australian um, data doesn't offer uh, the RSS, but I'll work that out later. Okay, so um, this is the thing here. The libraries that were included on the GitHub um, had this listed as an Electro Crow Panel 7.0p. Not quite what I was expecting to see, but that was ended. Up, that did end up being the right board. Um, also, the upload speed was. Uh, 921600 so that was also an unusual speed for it a bit faster i missed a 9600 board um com 20 is only because i have a lot of stuff going on on the com ports here i've got a few other things happening but that's the one that i came up with so otherwise that programmed fairly well once i figured that out now this is not automatically updated so uh, i'm just going to try and fix that code one more time uh, or i'll revert to an earlier version um, and then I'm pretty much going to call it quits. Uh, but this has been an interesting design, an interesting unit. There are some impressive parts about this. Uh, the build quality, I certainly appreciate. It's a little step above what I was expecting. The buttons are handy. And the built-in ESP32 was kind of unexpected. I didn't think that I'd be able to make this directly do things. I haven't had time to play around with this. The um, SD card slot, I think, would be certainly very handy. Um, but in itself, in a little package where you can just power it up, have it check some data, and then unplug it and walk away with it, kind of nice. This might be one of these things I take actually out in the field with me and harden it with some acrylic and a waterproofing case and uh, use it for field activities that really require very low power. Perhaps I could stick a solar panel on the bottom and sit it in the sun, let it power up, check some data, change the screen, and then put it back in my pocket. I don't know. Um, there are quite a number of options with this. I've got to spend a bit more time with it and um, sort of see what I can really do with it. Anyway, this has been a, uh, an interesting um, sponsorship program. I'll get on to some of the other stuff, hopefully some vehicle stuff. But uh, this is what I do during the hot weather. I stay inside and do desk jobs. Anyway, see you later. Hope it was fun and um, we'll catch you in the next one.